kids, my name is Grace and I will be leading you through today's experiment where we will be creating geodesic domes like this small one here or this much larger one here out of rolls of paper. In this experiment you have two different options. You can choose to make a smaller dome here which requires less materials and is less time intensive. You can also choose to make this much larger dome here which requires more materials and it takes a lot more time but the final result is a lot more cool you also have the option to make more than one of these small domes if you choose to make a smaller dome if you are interested in making the smaller one frequency dome please check out the other construction video before we begin the experiment we must first find out what is a geodesic dome google defines a geodesic dome as a hemispherical thin shell structure based on a geodesic polyhedron. Basically, this means that a geodesic dome is half of a sphere and it has a thin wall like the one you're going to construct. You also might notice that geodesic domes have many triangles in them. This is because triangles are very good at distributing the weight of the elements on it and they are very strong structurally. This is why geodesic domes are great for many different uses. There are many examples of geodesic domes in everyday life. For example, there are many greenhouses around the world that are made in geodesic domes. And there are also a lot of common playground structures that are geodesic domes. There are many different sizes of geodesic domes as well. What determines the size of a geodesic dome is how many individual struts of a dome there are. Struts are the pieces that connect together to form the shape. Many different domes have multiple different sizes of these struts. This makes them more complicated as well as larger in size. A one frequency dome is a dome that only has one different type of strut length. A two frequency dome is a dome that has two different sizes of struts shapes. And the two frequency dome is the dome that we will be constructing in this video. Now that we've learned what exactly geodesic domes are, let's get into the experiment. For today's experiment on constructing geodesic domes, you're gonna need about 70 pieces of paper, a PVC tube to roll the paper into tubes, some of these paper brads in order to put the pieces of paper together. You also need a ruler, some scissors, a roll of tape, and a writing utensil of your choice. Mine is a Sharpie marker. We're gonna begin with constructing the larger geodesic dome. For the larger geodesic dome, since it is a two frequency dome, we're gonna need two different lengths of pieces of paper for tubes. Now I have my handy dandy sheet that tells me exactly what I'm gonna need and I'll put that onto the screen right now. Take a picture or write it down so that you know what exactly you're gonna need to make this dome. To start off, we're gonna take a piece of paper or we're gonna set the paper in front of us and we're going to turn it at a slight angle. We're going to take our tube and we're going to put it right across the longest piece of the part of the paper. And we're going to take the tube and roll it back to the very corner. We're going to peel the corner up and roll it again. Just like this until it's nice and rolled. And then you're going to take your piece of tape, take it off and put it right at this little corner here so that the tube does not come apart. And then you can slide the tube, paper tube off of the pipe and you'll be all done with your first tube. Now, I'm gonna show you it again. Take it across the middle of the paper, roll it all the way back. Take the corner, start rolling it. Take a piece of tape, tape the end and slide it off. And you're done with two. Now, we only have to make 63 more. Let's get going.
I'm gonna fast forward through the next part so you don't have to watch me roll 63 tubes. So if you need to roll your tubes, feel free to pause the video and roll your tubes and then fast forward to where we start constructing it. Okay, now that we have rolled all 65 of our tubes, it's time to measure them and cut them. Now, the A struts, which are the longer struts, are gonna be either six inches long or 12 inches long, depending on the size of the dome you wanna make. If you wanna make a larger dome, your ratio is gonna be about 12 inches to 10 inches for the A struts to the B struts. And if you wanna make a smaller dome, your ratio will be about five inches to six inches for the B struts to the A struts. And I'll put all of this information on the screen so that you can write it down so that you know what you're doing. Now, I'm gonna be, when I'm making this, I'm gonna be making a larger dome. So my A struts are gonna be 12 inches long and my B struts are gonna be 10 inches long. So we're gonna take our ruler and we're gonna measure 12 inches on our dome and we're gonna mark it with our pen. And then we're gonna take our scissors and just snip the ends off. And it doesn't have to be completely perfect as long as it's about the right size. And we're gonna do that again. I'm just gonna use this tube I measured last time and I'm gonna cut it, snip the ends off, and there I have it. And for the B struts, we're gonna take it and we're gonna measure 10 inches. So about from here to here. And we're gonna take our scissors and cut the ends off. Now, these bit very similar, the A struts and the B struts, even though they have different sizes. So what I'm gonna do to mine in order to make it less confusing for me when I put it together, I'm gonna take a marker and I'm gonna put a little line down the middle so I know that the ones with the line down the middle are the shorter ones and they're the B struts. So we don't get confused when we do it later. I'm gonna cut another one for the 10 inches. And I'm going to mark it in the center with some marker. You can do this with pencil as well. It works either way. So these are about the same size. So these are our B struts and now we're gonna go ahead and make more of these. Now for the A struts, we wanna make a total of 35. And the B struts, we wanna make a total of 30. So I'm gonna fast forward through the next part and cut out the rest of the struts. Another good thing to have is a little old box or a plastic bag that you can cut your scraps of paper into so that you can recycle them later. And that's what I'm gonna be going to do. Now that we've cut out all of our tubes, it's time to assemble the dome. Let's get started. 
We're gonna start to assemble our dome now. So make sure you have all 65 of your tubes ready, as well as 26 of your brass. To begin, get 10 of your eight struts. And lay them in a circle shape around your table or whatever other surface you are using to construct your dome. Now, we're going to take our brads and connect them together. So you want to take your brad and you want to take two of your pieces and you just want to stick the brad through those pieces. Kind of like that, so it's poking out and both of your pieces can move like this. And if you're having trouble poking your brad through, feel free to grab a pair of scissors to poke the hole with the blades. Please use caution and or parental guidance when using scissors. Now we're going to do this and we're going to connect all 10 pieces together in a long line. Now we're going to continue doing this until the entire bottom is complete. Once you're done putting all 10 pieces together, it should look something like this. Now make sure you don't fold down the edge of these rods yet because we still have to connect pieces to them. For this next part, you're going to need your B pieces as well, your P struts. So at every junction here on this bottom part, we're going to take a B strut and an A strut, kind of like this, and we're going to put them on the brad in every single corner. So an A strut and a B strut. It doesn't matter which one's on the top and which one's on the bottom as long as you have both of them on there like that. Now go ahead and continue doing this all the way around the bottom here. A and a B. Just like that. And after you're done connecting these, to help you out, you can take the two ends of the brads and you can fold them outwards. That way the piece of paper won't slip off of it. So we're gonna add another A. I'm going to fast forward through the next part.
Now that we have an A and a B on every corner, it's time to continue on. Your dome should look something like this. You're going to take every triangle here, or every corner here that has two pieces, and we're gonna connect the B's up to the B's, and the A's up to the A's, and every other pattern. So you should go around and make the B pieces connect to the B pieces, and the A pieces connect to the A pieces. So it should go B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, all the way around the circle. So these two B struts, we're gonna connect at the top with a brad. We're gonna take our brad, poke it through, poke it through, and leave it like that. We don't wanna close it yet. And we're gonna go to the next one, which is gonna be an A triangle with these two A struts here, and we're gonna connect these at the top as well. Okay, now we're gonna go to the next one, which is also it's gonna be a B one. And we're going to take our scissors, poke the hole. Poke it through this one and poke it through that one. And then we're going to go to the next one, which is going to be an A one. So continue going around the circle, connecting up these pieces, B's to B's and A's to A's. After you finish connecting all your struts, your circle should look something like this, and you should have 10 triangles, each one alternating between a smaller one and a bigger one, all the way around. So you should have five little ones and five big ones. Now, after you have this stage, you need to get 10 B pieces. With your 10 B struts, you're gonna connect each of these triangles to one another through these struts. So from here to here, for example, from here to here, and all the way around the circle, connecting these pieces together. So you can see we connected these two here. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing all the way around the circle. And the more we add on, is gonna gonna want to try and stretch the shape out. So you'll start to see it come take form after we add these struts. I'm gonna fast through, forward through the next bit, and I'll show you what it looks like in the end.
Now at this point, your structure should look something like this. It's not quite complete yet because we still have another one or two levels to add on. So at this point, we want to add another layer of struts. So at each point where we have our A struts on the bottom, we have an A triangle. Like right here, we have an A triangle where there's two A pieces connecting up to this middle piece. And we have a B triangle right here where it's two B pieces connecting up to this middle piece. At this A triangle, we want to take two of our A struts and we want to add them on like this so that there are six, it looks like there's six pieces coming off of this rad here. So we want to add our two struts on right here. Okay. And now we can fully close this brad because we don't have to add anything else. Now on this B strut, we want to add one B here so that there are five B pieces coming out of this one center piece. So here's our one and we can close this brad off and that's good. So we have two, one, and now we're going to come back here and put two A struts on this connection here because this is an A triangle. And we want to just continue this pattern all the way around the circle. We have our two A's and we want to add these on here. And we're going to go to the next one and we're going to add one B. And we're just going to continue this pattern around the circle. So I'm going to fast forward through the next part and come to you when it's done. Okay, you'll know you've done this correctly when it goes two, one, two, one with these upper struts all the way around the circle. And the ones that have two struts coming off of them have A struts on the bottom and A struts on the top. And the ones that only have one have two B struts on the bottom and one B strut on the top. So make sure, double check that this is what you've done. We're gonna take five of our A struts and connect all of these struts together. So you wanna take this B strut here and connect it to this A strut and this A strut so that they form a connection here. Like this. And then we'll take an A strut and add it here. Take another one and add it here. We're just going to open this a little so it doesn't slide off. Now we're going to go to the next one and do the same thing. Connect this B strut to these two A struts. And we're going to connect this A strut here to this junction. another A strut off of that. And we're going to continue to do this all the way around with the remaining pieces. And as you can see, the shape is starting to come together.
row on the top. So we're gonna take the rest of our B pieces and we're gonna connect them to this. So we're gonna come one off of each junction here. And we can close this brad. We're gonna go to the next one. Do the same thing. And do the rest the same thing all the way around. Okay, now that we have these on there, we have one more connection we have to make. You're going to take the tops of all of these and you're going to connect them in the middle. So you're going to connect all five in the middle here with one brad. This final connection really stiffens up the structure and just like that, you're finished. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed making this two frequency geodesic dome. Feel free to check out the other video on how to make a one frequency geodesic dome as well. Have a good day.